back YouTube this is Dave Lucas with injection molding skills and more so today's video we are going to go over gate freeze study so I did a video back when I very first started this channel four years ago okay that went over gate freeze study and then a year ago I did another video over gate freeze study so what I am going to do is I'm going to take both those videos and combine them together and show you what a gate free study is on both those and you can kind of get a little bit of the information from both videos of me doing it putting that together over the years okay i've changed a lot in those years four years so i worked at ply gym at one company and then another company i worked at safari land at the time and then moved to destin and then i worked for a company called uh uh, Southwire which went out of business actually that company did there in Destin does like my new uh, window thing so I went and got me a new window treatment for my for my truck but uh, I thought I would uh, walk outside it's a lot brighter out here uh, the weather's pretty nice today uh, but I only am I am going to show you guys both these videos together I'm going to show you the one in four, that I did four years ago. Then I'm going to show you the other one that I did a year ago. That way you guys can pick and choose what you guys want out of those videos. If there's anything in these videos that you guys would like or a copy of the, the formula, I could easily email you the copy of the formula. That way you can use it at your plant uh, to do the gate-free study. It's very easy to do. Uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to eliminate the hold time. You don't need to have all this hold time on a part uh, Your your main goal is to have a fast cycle time to get the part out of the press and to make a good part And as fast as possible. So the, the more parts you can make the more money you're gonna make So think about it that way and you want to be efficient in your process. Okay, so I hope you guys like the video I hope you guys enjoy it Stay tuned see how heavy I was in those videos I weighed I think a hundred or 240 pounds four years ago and then last year I weighed 220 I think is where I was at right now I am down to one almost 175 the lowest I've been so far is 175 right now this morning I was at 180 I think is where I'm at but you'll see in the videos I'm trying to get in the shape the older I get, the better I'm trying to be in shape and, and take care of my body, guys. But I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm rambling on. Let's get into it, okay, guys? Okay. Welcome back, YouTube. This is Dave with Injection Molding Skills and More. Today, I wanted to go over gate freeze study with you guys. So, this is what we're going to do. So... <clears throat> The purpose of a gate freeze uh, study, okay? The purpose of this test is to de determine the point at which the gate begins to freeze off and back and pack and hold pressure can be removed, okay? So this is actually this, this is to ensure that the process is optimized and <clears throat> that there's no time wasted pressurizing the already frozen gate, okay? So basically what this is, is this is going to show you guys what your hold time or pack time is actually supposed to be in the lowest amount. That way you have the optimized uh, process cycle and everything. Let me, this mass bugging me, I'm sorry. But, so what we're gonna do is this is what it's gonna be. So we're gonna do a gate freeze study, okay? That is what today's thing is, okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to have three columns. So you're going to have a sample column. You're going to have a hold time. Or if you guys want to call it pack time, that's up to you. And then you're going to have the weight, okay? And then you're going to have three columns like this, okay? 
what I usually do is I start off, I get the process optimized to where you're running good parts and then you want to take your hold time. This will be number one sample. Start off at like 10 seconds. Then you put your weight. Then you come across here and you go across two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what you do is you do this all the way down, going down there. So what you'd want to do is start at nine, then the next one, or 10, and then the next one would be 9.5. Next one down would be 9. Next one down would be 8.5. Next one down, 8. Next one down, 7.5. Next one down, 7. Next one down, 6.5. And what you want to do is you want to at least do 10 to 15 of these. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep going down. And you're going to do 10 to 15 of these. What you're going to do is you're going to start off and you're going to do number one is you're going to do your how much it weighs. So let's say it weighs 500 grams. Okay. The next one you weigh it and it weighs 500 grams. Then the next one, 500 grams. Next one, 500 grams. Then all of a sudden you start seeing some change. So this one would be 489 grams. Then the next one would be 480 grams. And then the next one probably would be. 476 then the next one probably would be like maybe let's say 465 okay so the whole theory of this and how it works is you do each part what happens is is you're trying to find out when the weight quits so like around it right around in this area is where your weight actually quit moving okay so these you can see it never changed it stayed the same down here changed on you so what you're actually trying to do is you're trying to plot it to where Okay, I start off up here at 10, 10, then all of a sudden the curve went down like this. So this here would be like, let's say this is 10 seconds. This is nine and a half seconds. This one here would be nine seconds. This one here would be 8.5 seconds. Then you can see the trend starting to fade off and go down. This is where your part starts losing weight, okay? So then what you want to do is you're going to plot it this way. So what you can do is you can do it like this. You can have it to where you have one sample one all the way to sample 15 and you do your hold time and you start off with the highest hold time that you got so 16 15 14 you can do it in like one second increments half second increments it, it's up to you guys how you want to do it it depends on your part weight your part size your, and all that then what you want to do is you want to kind of like have it to where you're plotting it out like this. So if you plot it out like this, basically how it looks is like this. So you can be like, okay, I went from one to 15. My weight started here and it started getting more weight to it, more weight to it, more weight to it, more weight to it. Then all of a sudden, about around eight, eight and a half seconds, it stopped on me. So these would be what you'd want. So you'd want either eight or eight and a half seconds would, would be your, your hold time. That means your gate's frozen right here. You're not adding no more material to that part whatsoever. You're just losing time there. Now, it could be different for a smaller part. A smaller part, it could be less time. It could be two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, you know, and going up that way. So, this is actually how you would do a gate seal study. Or hold and pack so a lot of people use it as hold time or pack time okay so understanding it that way okay guys so that's actually everything that you needed to know on gate free study I'm um, sorry I got interrupted right there for a minute so but again if you do that and you actually go through and do these you can easily start at 10 go to 9 you know instead of half increments you can do 10 9 8 7 6 all the way down and then put your part weight over here but i always take and i always do 
uh, I take a china marker with me or a marker and mark part one, sample one, and the time that I use. And then I put on there how long the time is and go from there. And that's your study basically. So you want it to look like you want it to look like this. I can't show you all this, so but it'll look like this. So if you do your thing the right way, this is how it'll look. You can start with one at the top and be the lowest, or you can start with the one and be the, the highest and go down. And this is how it'll look, okay? You do the part the whole time, then weigh the part, and then go from there. And then it'll plot itself out like this. So then let's say this is high all the way across. Then all of a sudden your part starts to change weight right in here. Right up here at the very top would be where the gate freezes off and you can't pack no more material into the part. So, I hope this explains it to you guys. Um, thanks for watching my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the feedback. And let me know what you guys would like to see in the next video, please. YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Today we're actually going to go over gate freeze study. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to go through the steps. There's 11 steps that they tell you to do to do a gate freeze. Okay, and on this we'll go through the whole thing together. I'm going to spin you guys around and get you close to the board so you guys can actually see exactly what I'm doing. That way you can actually follow along. I mean, I don't know any other way of doing it. So here we go. We're going to turn the camera around here. I hope you guys can see that. So the purpose of this, of this test is to determine the point at which the gate begins to freeze off and the pack and hold pressure can be removed. This is to ensure that the process is optimized and that no time is wasted pressurizing an already frozen gate. Okay. So what happens is, is the majority of the time people keep on adding and adding hold time to it when you don't even have to add no more hold time. The gate's already frozen. You're not adding nothing else to the part whatsoever, okay? So on this, they tell you the procedure to do this, okay? You want, step one is to load the tool. Step two is to optimize the process, okay? Step three is you're gonna set the machine to what you would be considered a long pack or hold time, okay? So you're gonna start off with that, okay? Take a sample shot from the setting, that'll be sample one. So what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna do like this. You got a, a column that has sample, a column that has hold time, and a column that has weight, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna go and you're gonna take the first shot You'll start off at one on the time, or you can start high. It's up to you, however you want to do it. So you're going to take a sample from the first setting and label that part one, okay? Then you're going to slightly decrease the pack or hold time, okay? You're going to actually bring it back down. Allow the machine to, to stabilize one to two shots before you take the next shot, okay? Take a sample from this setting, these settings, and then label this sample two. Okay, step eight here says repeat step five, six, and seven until you have 15 samples, okay, co collected. Weigh each part on a scale and record the part weight. 10, record fill time and pack injection pressure from the machine display. Repeat this process 10 times, okay? So what you're actually gonna do is you're gonna weigh, you can weigh the parts and then make sure you got your time here. What you'll see is as you're going along, the weight will be the same, be the same, then all of a sudden you'll get into an area where, where the weight will change on you. Once it starts to change on you and then it stops changing and it stops completely, and it, and it still weighs the same all the way out like you'll have like this one it'll go and 
you'll have the same weight, same weight, same weight. Then number three, for four seconds, or for, for 2.5 seconds, the weight will change. Then on three, it'll it'll change. Then let's say on number three, 3.5 seconds, it'll change one more time. Then let's say if you get to four seconds and it doesn't change, and it stays the same, then you go to the next one, 4.5, and it stays the same there, and five, and it stays the same there. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, wherever this is and it changes that, you go either a, a half of a second or a whole second ahead, and then that's where you wanna stop your hold time at. You don't wanna keep adding more hold time to it because what you're gonna do is you're just gonna un use unlimited time on your cycle time. You, you don't wanna do that. So I'm hoping this helps you guys out. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. So like I said, you just, you're gonna weigh each part and you're just gonna go up on the hold time and then until it quits packing out the parts, okay? Let you guys look over that a little bit. Make sure it's good for you guys. So remember on this, what you're wanting to do is, this, this will help optimize your process. So you do a fill only shot to make sure you're balanced correctly. Then you start adding your hold. So what you're doing is you're filling the part 95 to 98% full. And then once you get to that, then you're taking half of your injection pressure, whatever that half is, you can use 50% of that. I always start out at 30% because the less is better and then work my way up from there. But take half of your injection pressure to start off on your hold pressure, okay? Then you add that time and you just take your time and start going down through there, weighing them parts out and that'll give you exactly what your hold time is supposed to be. This will optimize your processes and make your processes run a lot fit, more efficient and a lot faster. So try this, see if this works. If you guys have any issues to where you don't understand this, email me and I will send over a copy of the file itself. That way you can read it yourself and then understand it that way, okay? So I, I appreciate all the support to the channel. Sorry it took me a little bit of time to get back to you guys. I was busy today hanging out at the beach and stuff, so I appreciate all the support to the channel. I hope you guys enjoy this, and I hope it's informative to you guys. Till next time, peace. Okay guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, part of the video. I hope you guys learned something from those videos. Go back, look at it again if you have to. Again, if you need to, email me. My email is in the bio. You can go in there and look and see what you think. Um, there's a lot of good things in that that you guys can find. Um, I do appreciate all the support to the channel. Looking back at those videos, that was crazy. You know, back in the day, like four years ago when the COVID hit and stuff, and then, you know, doing the video that I did a year ago in Destin, Florida, which Destin, Florida was a great place to live trying to make my way back to florida now guys but i do appreciate all the support to the channel please like share and subscribe comment down below if you guys want more videos um, and what you guys would like to see in the videos okay guys until next time peace